Okay, so let's go through these examples. First one's very easy. Um, so you have an experiment was conducted to investigate various factors that affect the rate of reaction between calcium carbonate and dilute hydrochloric acid. And this is the experiment. Well, will the rate of reaction be faster in beaker A or B? Use collision theory to explain your answer. I think if I remember correctly, this was a two mark question. So you just need have, you get a mark just for saying which beaker has a faster reaction rate and then the other mark for collision theory. So all you need to do is just pay attention to the difference between the two beakers. So they had used the same amount of calcium carbonate, same temperature, same volume of hydrochloric acid, but beaker A has 1.0 and beaker B is 0.01. So obviously in this case, beaker A uses um, the more concentrated version of hydrochloric acid, which means that the reaction rate in beaker A will be faster because you have a higher frequency of collision. So you have a higher chance of having a successful collision with the correct orientation. Okay, so the moral of the story is not to lose any mark. I don't know how 9% got zero. So one mark for saying that um, beaker A, because there's a higher concentration of HCl, so that's one mark, and this will increase the frequency of collision. Um, because this question is only worth two marks, you actually don't have to talk about the correct orientation. But if this is a three mark question, you will have to. So you just say increase frequency of collision, and that's the second mark. Uh, just we'll talk about this wording later. Just don't use proportion of successful collision. But like, come on, it's so easy. All right. Example two. So this is another type of question when you have to draw a graph. So you're already given one. This is a classic um, concentration time graph. Well, in this case, mass. So an experiment was conducted using 10 grams of marble chips and 200 mL 1.0 molar hydrochloric acid. The mass of CO2 produced over time was collected and plotted here. So this is of the original reaction. On the same set of scale, sketch the graph for the following experiment. So let's start with number one. Number one, you still uses 10 grams of marble chips, but you're using 200 mL of 2.0 molar hydrochloric acid. So you're increasing the concentration of HCl. But because you one of the reactants, it's you're using the same amount of one of the reactants. You, you're not going to change the um, the amount of product that you get because um, marble chips in this case are limiting reagents. So basically the, con the reaction rate will increase, but it produces the same amount of product. So I'm just going to go like that. So they're supposed to, they're not supposed to go down. So I'm going to try again. Wow, look at that. Okay, let, let's just assume that these two have the same amount of products. So I'm just going to write here, same amount, same total amount of product. But the reaction rate is for higher for number one. So this is number one. Oh, that's number one. Let's look at number two. So I'm just going to use a different color here. So with number two, we have 15 grams of marble chips now. So you increase the amount of marble chips compared to number one, uh, but the concentration of hydrochloric acid remains the same. So because marble chip is the limiting reagent here, if I increase the amount of uh, marble chips, and if you want to ask me whether why I know marble chips are a limiting reagent, you do have to do the calculation to work out. But you can just, uh, I'll, I'll tell you in the question, that's the other way. If you have more marble chips, Basically, you're going to have a faster reaction, but um, also more product. I think I should have extended this scale. So let's just say it's going to go up. It's very hard to know which reaction is going to be faster, one or two. So I'm not going to penalize you on that. But number two has to make more product because you just increase the amount of the, of the limiting reagent. And also it has to have a faster reaction rate compared to number one. Okay, the last one, let's look at this one. So number three, actually I'm going to use green. Um, number three has less reactant, five grams, and the same concentration of hydrochloric acid. So if you have less reactant, you get less product, but also the reaction rate is going to be lower because you have less collision. So I have to make the slope um, 
less stiff as well. So maybe maybe it looks like this. So this is this potentially is number three. When you have um, a low a slower red, I think this could be better. Yep, that's better. So it takes longer to get to this point. It doesn't look like it takes longer though. Okay, so it takes longer to get to the plateau point when you when the reaction stops, and you also have less product. So that's the second time. I'm just gonna go back and label number one. That's the second type of question when you have to draw a graph. So this is one. No, that's supposed to be the answer. Anyway, so this is number example three when you're given a graphs or a few graphs and you have to predict what has happened to um, the reaction. So an experiment was conducted by reacting 0.050 grams of magnesium with 20 ml of 2.0 molar hydrochloric acid. So you have, these are the amount of reactants and then you collect the amount of hydrogen gas evolved. So the original experiments here, I know this the graph is a little bit hard to see, but I really like this question, which is I have to keep it. We really should draw a new graph, I guess. Suggest the changes that were applied to the original experiment to generate graphs X, Y, Z, and W. So let's just start. Let's start with X. Let's use um, let's use a different color. So X is here. And if you compare X to W, you can see that first of all, the same amount of product is produced between the two, but X you just get there faster. So you have faster red or higher red but same amount of product. I think I need to tell you as well that the magnesium is going to be the limiting reagent. So basically what you can do, and my answer here is probably not going to be the only accurate answer for this question. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the concentration of hydrochloric acid while keeping everything else the same. So I'm going to use 0 0.05 grams mg. So that doesn't change. 20 ml of HCl at um, 2.0 molar concentration. So the only change here, let's just write the change, is I'm going to use 2. Point, sorry, let, let's go with 4 for example, 4.0 molar HCl. <clears throat> So we're increasing the concentration of HCl, which would increase the rate of the reaction, but not affect the amount of product that you get. So that's X. Let's move on to Y. So this is Y. Now we're going to have to make an assumption here because the graph doesn't... Let's just assume that it does go all the way to the end. So Y is slower, but let's just assume that you have same amount of product. If, if it is the same amount of product, then it means that I can't really change the amount of <clears throat> magnesium that I'm using, but I can reduce the concentration of HCl as long as it is still re um, the, the reactant in excess. So let's say I'm going to use 1.0 molar hydrochloric acid. You could also use magnesium that is... Um, like in bigger pieces in Y compared to the original experiment, but I don't have any information on the size of the magnesium. So I can't really make that recommendation here. Okay, and then we get to Z. So Z, you have a slower reaction and also you only have half the amount of product. So slower and you only have half the product from before. So you're going to need you, you can do more than one thing, I think. So you can reduce the concentration of HCl as well as reduce the amount of uh, magnesium. But I think if you just reduce the amount of magnesium, that also slower the reaction rate because um, there is less reactant to collide. So I can I can just do that, but I'm also going to use 1.0 molar HCl. So that's Z. Um, w is the opposite of Z. You just have a faster reaction also with more product. So we're just going to do the opposite here. So this is faster. Is it double? Yep, double the amount of product. So I'm going to use 0 0.10 grams of magnesium, and I'm going to double the concentration of HCl as well. Okay, so that's example three.
the key thing is you need to be able to distinguish between the type of changes that will only increase the rate of reaction and the type of changes that will also increase the amount of product. Okay, example four. Now this is where we actually go back to year 12 chemistry, not year 10 science. Um, this is when you have, there's a lot of information here. So an aqueous solution of sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid react according to this equation. The production of solid sulfur makes the solution turbid or cloudy. So there is some solid sulfur here. Basically, basically the solution turns opaque. And this provides a way to investigate the effect of various factors on the rate of reaction. The student investigate the following reaction mixtures at room temperature. So these are the reaction mixtures. Discuss how these reaction mixtures would provide evidence of the effect of changes in the concentration of sodium thiosulfate on the rate of reaction. In all three cases, hydrochloric acid is in excess. Okay, so this is when it gets a little bit tricky. Is that people need to understand when they see a table like this, which is a description of the reaction mixture. So both reactants are in solution. And the way that the first reaction or the first investigation is put together is um, so you start with 10 mil of this. And I think I think the issue here is when people read this, they actually think that you are using the same amount of uh, the same concentration of everything, but you, you don't because you then dilute it. So let's say we just have I was going to use a different color, but I couldn't be bothered. Let's say you have um, a beaker. And then you put in 10 mil of 0 0.25 molar. So 10 mil. That's the first one. And then in and then in the second beaker, you put in 25 mil. So 25 mil of this is going to have more mole in it. So let's say that's Na2 S203. That this is this is the actual particles. If I have 25 mil. It's going to be a little bit, like I need a few more particles to have the same concentration. So 25 mil at 0 0.25 um, molar concentration, let's say it looks like this. Maybe, maybe one more. Okay, and then uh, reaction mixture 3, because you start with 40 mil, so you start here, you need to have a lot more. Maybe I should put one less here. Okay, so these three solutions of sodium thiosulfate, this is just the first thing. They're supposed to have the same concentration right now, but you already have a different number of mole that you put into each of them because of the starting volume that you have. And then if I've, I'm going to add like hydrochloric acid now, so I add the same amount of hydrochloric acid. So you have 15 ml. Let's say this is hydrochloric acid, so 15 mil. Oh god, that's not straight, but anyway. So 15 mil hydrochloric acid. So you actually have added the same number of mole hydrochloric acid to the mixture. So this is HCl, is red. And then the, rem the, the rest is water. So the total volume of the three are supposed to be the same. So in the first one, I need to add 35 mL water. So this is just H2O. And then in the second one, I'm going to add 20 mL of water. And in the third so one, I'm only adding 5 mL of water for a total volume of 60 for all three. So if you look at this, even though it may look like you have used the same concentration of sodium thiosulfate, you actually haven't, because if I mix this together, it will be mixed. You actually have the least amount of sodium thiosulfate in number one, and then you have a little bit more in number two and a little bit more in number three. So there is an increase in concentrations of sodium thiosulfate, as well as the number of moles of sodium thiosulfate going from number one to number three here. And that is essentially the independent variable in this case. So you just need to learn to read this table. So this one has the least number of mole and concentration of sodium thiosulfate and then go to here you have the most number of mole and concentration of sodium thiosulfate okay and then from there you can answer the question because um, I think the question asks you to describe how this allows you to 
Actually, I can't remember what the question is. What is the question? Discuss how the reaction mixture provide evidence of the effect of changes in concentration of sodium disulfate. Um, so two marks. One mark for saying that in the reaction mixture, the concentration is varied. One being the least and three being the most. So that's good. But also the second point is just as important. And you have to point out that all the other factors, including concentration, volume, and number of mole of hydrochloric acid used and the total volume of the mixture are being controlled. So if you want to test for the effect of concentration, it's also important to remember that everything else has to remain the same. Otherwise, um, you're going to have uncontrolled variable and you can't really, um, your experiment is not valid. So that's number four. Moving on to number five, this is an old exam question. So hydrogen peroxide in an aqueous solution at room temperature decomposes slowly and irreversibly to form water and oxygen, according to this equation. Propose a method to determine how quickly a solution of hydrogen peroxide decomposes when stored at a particular temperature. So I think this year was the first year that you actually had to design an experiment, if you will. I mean, propose a method. So it's not a full-on experiment, but you have to propose a way to measure the rate of a reaction. And it's, it is for three marks. So, hang on, I think I have the, yes, look at this. This is this is the actual, um, how people went on that year. So almost half the state got zero. I mean, at least get a mark, like how hard could it be to get a mark? But no, so you have to think about what you need to say. And I'm just gonna show you the solution because I really think, hope that you have done uh, this question before you watch the video. So for three marks, there are three things that you need to say. And so, so think about it. One of the mark is going to be for sure of on the collection method. So how are you going to collect? How are you going to measure reaction rate? I'm going to say, for example, collect the gas that's produced over time. So that's one mark. One of the marks is going to be for saying that um, the while well, linking the, the amount of gas that is produced over time back to the rate of decomposition. And I think the third map, which is quite, quite mean, but they, I think they're going to require that you start with a known amount of hydrogen peroxide. So you could actually calculate the rate of decomposition that way. Three marks, you need to give me three things, make it clear. So this is the reason why I include this is because I have a lot of really interesting uh, comments. Effective responses to this question include using a known amount of H2O2, an appropriate quantity measure at time intervals. So whenever you describe a process of measuring the rate of a reaction, make sure you specify that you're measuring, say for example, in this case, the volume of oxygen over, over, over time. So you measure the volume of oxygen produced every 10 seconds, for example, and then link it. Um, how the quantity was measured. Yeah, use a gas syringe. So when you measure the volume of, the, of oxygen, use a gas syringe and then take a known amount of H2O2. Or you can talk about change in mass, change in pH. And then look at this. You should take the time to read this whole thing, but high scoring rep responses also describe graphing the quantity this change against time and using the gradient of the graph as an indica indication of the rate of decomposition. So think about how you whether or not you can write a method to describe how you could measure the rate of a reaction because that is the last type of question that can be asked these days relating to this topic